Hello and welcome to Nerdio's WVD Demo of the Day video series. And this video is going to be about applying user session time limits to optimize your WVD deployment. Don't you hate it when users don't properly log off their system, either they leave the session open or they disconnect and leave applications open and never log off. Um, and there are multiple ways to control that behavior with Nerdio's auto scaling. You can choose your scale and aggressiveness level, which will either force users to log off and, and disconnect, uh, or it will leave any existing sessions alone, depending on your preference. And there are also uh, various RDS session limits that you can set either through local policy, through registry on your golden image, or through group policy at the domain level. What we decided to do is uh, make this process super easy for our customers. So we created a user interface that allows you to apply session time limits to individual host pools uh, at the host pool level within the Nerdia Manager. This feature is available with Nerdia Manager starting with version 2.4 of the application. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Uh, we're gonna click on our Spring Update demo workspace and choose a host pool. Let's go ahead and choose our marketing host pool as an example. And from the drop down menu, we'll see an option for user session time limits for this particular host pool. And by default, this is going to be turned off, meaning that either session time limits will not apply or it will respect any changes that you've made either to your image or through, the, through group policy in your domain. However, if you wanted to control these settings through the Nerdy Manager, you would turn on the, um, uh, the time limit sessions and you have a number of configurations here that you can apply. Number one is a setting called log off disconnected sessions after, and then you can configure a certain amount of time. This is probably the most popular session, uh, the most popular setting and each one of these, by the way, has a pretty extensive tooltip that explains in detail what the, session, what the setting does. But let me go ahead and, and explain it to you. So the log of disconnected sessions after a certain amount of time allows you to end the user session if they've disconnected it themselves or it was disconnected by, by some other means after a certain amount of time. This is recommended because otherwise users who are not disciplined to log off after the end of their day are going to just click the X in the, in the upper, you know, in the upper part, portion of their screen and leave the session with all the applications running, which continues to consume resources. And then as long as um, if you're using a uh, scale and aggressiveness level below high, um, you know, they, th those sessions may not be scaled in. So there are a few settings here. You can either leave it as not configured, which means it will just leave any existing configurations as they are. You can disable it, meaning that you are preventing any automa automatic logging off of disconnected session. You can set it to never, which is sort of similar to disabled, where it lets the session stay, um, stay disconnected for, for forever, basically or you can choose from any number of options uh, for the duration. The, the most common one is probably, let's say one or two hours. It gives users enough time to disconnect their session, go to lunch, come back and resume where they were. But if they're doing this overnight, then after two hours of being disconnected, the session will be logged off. The next se uh, setting is called disconnect idle sessions after a certain amount of time. Similar concept here, not configure, disable, and never. And then the ability to disconnect an idle session, meaning one that's currently connected, but the user hasn't interacted with it in a while. So if the user hasn't interacted with a connected session for a day, it will go into disconnected state. And then from disconnected state, it will be logged off after two hours in this particular example. The next setting is about disconnecting active sessions. Now, disconnecting active sessions is not commonly used. This is basically imposing a limit on how long your users could stay active on the system, which is pretty uncommon. So we're gonna skip it and leave it as not configured. 
And then we have a yes or no setting or enabled or disabled setting that allows you to control whether set sessions such as, for example, idle or active get disconnected first or immediately logged off. So in the default behavior, if you set a one day limit on idle sessions, after one day of being idle, the session will get disconnected and then the disconnected timer will kick in and log that session off after two hours. However, if you wanted to end the session immediately without going into a disconnected state first, you would select the enabled option. So these are the various session time limits for full desktops. For remote apps, there is one more setting available. So let's go ahead and look at, at session timeouts for a remote app pool. And you'll see there is an additional setting called log off empty remote sessions after a certain amount of time. Now, what is this? When you launch a remote app or when a user launches a remote app, that remote app comes up inside of a WVD or an RDS session. And when you close that app, that session continues running in the background. And what this lets you control is how long does that session continue to be disconnected or, or available or not logged off after the remote app is closed. And that's called an empty remote app session. And it's useful to keep the session open for you know, a short duration because that allows the user to reconnect back and relaunch the applications without having to go through the entire login process. Obviously establishing a brand new session when it isn't already connected requires uh, you know, running, uh, applying GPOs and running any scripts and doing whatever happens when users are log in, logging in, whereas reconnecting to an existing session is a much quicker process. So sometimes you may want to keep the session open for a few minutes, maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's one minute, but you definitely don't wanna keep an empty remote app session open for too long. So in this case, you can set to log off an empty remote app session after five minutes. In this case, the application closes. If there are no other applications open inside of this uh, particular RDS session, it will be logged off after five minutes. And this really concludes our, um, um, our discussion on user session time limits. These are very useful and highly recommended in almost every environment to keep things clean, allow users to always start the day with a brand new session, to optimize the way in which auto scale works and becomes efficient and scale in actually produces the desired cost savings by shutting down and removing compute capacity when it's no longer needed. And in order to be able to do that, it's, it's important to think through the user experience from a session limit perspective. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing you in future videos.